Uh, the only one I know who's had an album out last week, Kevin Brennan. <laughs> Dr. Huck, that's very kind. I've yet to receive an invitation to tour Europe with it. Um, but, you know, <laughs> but who knows, after today, and given that I am entitled to an Irish passport because of my uh, father's uh, uh, birthplace, uh, maybe I will be able to do that eventually. I, I should declare my membership of the Musicians' Union and the, uh, and the financial support they gave me at the last election. I'm also a member of the Ivers Academy and have some small earnings from MP4, the world's only parliamentary rock group, as you know, Dr. Yeah, yeah. But um, can I congratulate um, the mother of my house, my right honourable, very good friend, for uh, just her tenacity in pushing forward this issue over the last uh, year or so and not letting it go and not letting the government off the hook. And the fact she brings her, you know, immense experience and powerful um, adv advocacy to this issue is really important to musicians across the country. I know that they are all immensely grateful to her for her campaigning on this matter. And, um, you know, everyone's right. There is a, a tremendous variety of, of, of artists from the UK and of different types of artists and musical styles and genres, you know, that, that tour Europe from, you know, major orchestras to the up-and-coming opera singer, as been mentioned by the Honourable Member from Bromley, to the young singer-songwriter with an acoustic guitar and an easy jet ticket and no, you know, support, perhaps a few T-shirts and CDs inside their uh, pool suitcase, you know, so it, it, it's, a, it's an incredibly, uh, you know, varied um, uh, landscape. And the government doesn't seem to me it's, it's, uh, to have really grasped the importance of this from the outset. And yet it could have been so different because I, I remember in this very room, you know, in January 2020, the, uh, the former uh, minister, the predecessor of the, the minister who's here this day, and I welcome her to her place. I don't think we've had the opportunity to have a debate before and I look forward to our exchanges over the coming months and years. But who, who her predecessor, I think he's the member for Thurston Moulton, if I got that right, in terms of his constituency, Nigel Adams, what's his? Uh, Selby. No, Selby, sorry, I got the wrong one. Selby, um, he said at the time, uh, at, at that debate, touring is the lifeblood of the industry. And then he went on to say, it is essential that free movement is protected for artists post-2020. Essential. So that was government policy in January 2020, just after we'd left the European Union, that, um, that, that, there was, uh, 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 that there was free movement for artists uh, across the European Union. So that's a fit, that was official government policy. And yet, you know, what went wrong? Why did that not get translated? And I think the, 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 on, the, the Honourable Member, the, the Chair of the Select Committee, you know, put it very well because our experiences in dealing with Lord Frost in trying to uh, untie this issue and get some movement on it was immensely frustrating. Not only was there delays that the chair of the select committee referred to, but when Lord Frost appeared before us in the select committee, he actually said, in contrast actually to what the, um, the, the, the minister, the minister's predecessor had said in this room uh, on the record in Hansard, he actually said, we do not agree that permanent visa, visa waivers, uh, with permanent visa waivers, because they deprive us, of, deprive us of control over our immigration system. And that's the root of this. An issue that is not an immigration issue, mm -hmm. that is an issue about our creative industries and the cultural exchanges and the, you know, the, the, the touring of artists across Europe and across the United Kingdom, being conflated with an argument about freedom of movement in relation to immigration. There's absolutely yeah, nothing yeah, yeah. to do with it. I've said it before, I've never heard in all my 20 years in Parliament anyone on the doorstep saying to me, what are you going to do about all these Polish violinists <laughs> coming over here, entertaining our people? It's an absolute disgrace. When are you going to do something about it? I mean, it's a nonsense. And yet that's what actually changed in that period of time between the position of the DCMS minister on the the, es the essentiality, if you like, of freedom of movement for artists in order to be able to work uh, to a position where the government was saying we don't believe in this because it would undermine our immigration system. What a load of nonsense. Uh, and, and what a way to treat <coughs> this hugely important part of our economy, fastest growing part of our economy, the, uh, the creative industries, and as the Chair of the Select Committee quite rightly pointed out, a very important export, export earner for this country, 
an industry we actually have a comparative advantage in and one which we you know, can be very proud of and one which brings immense um, prestige to this country and the soft power it also exerts as well as the hardline economic benefits that we get from it. So, you know, quite frankly, that's what the problem has been. And this is an issue which the Prime Minister said at the Liaison Committee that, you know, he would strain every sinew and promise to fix it. And yet, a couple of months later, this issue that the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom had said was so important that, you know, he would put his full weight behind it was not even on the agenda of the first meeting of the Partnership Council uh, in relation to Brexit. The government, as an afterthought, put it on as any other business. And Lord Frost had to explain that when he came in front of our committee as well. So I say to the Minister, I know this isn't within her power, but perhaps she can pass it on to her colleagues in government. Take this issue off, Lord Frost. Let's get him a million miles away yeah, from this yeah, issue yeah, yeah, yeah. as quickly as possible. Give it to some senior minister or even a junior minister if they an up-and-coming, able and talented minister like the minister opposite, I'm sure is, give it to somebody with the remit across government to sort out all of the issues um, between different departments that we've heard, you know, with, with government not acting in concert and in a, in a harmonious way on this issue. Give it to someone to sort it out. Not Lord Frost. I'm not a believer in nominative determinism. But let's face it, Lord Frost has had a chilling effect on this issue. It's fixable. Let's fix it. Yeah. Yeah.